Welcome to Elevate Care. I'm your host, Carrie Perez, and I am thrilled to be joined by Mr. Jeff Decker, who is president of our Physician and Leadership Solutions Group at AMN Healthcare. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hi, Carrie. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure to be here today. Looking forward to talking with you. Me as well. So we are talking all things locum tenens today. I know we're going to be discussing some trends, talking a little bit about technology and some motivators. So looking forward to to getting started. So let's first uh, start talking about why so many healthcare professionals are drawn to locum tenens today. Yeah, that's a great question, Carrie. So uh, let me first say that uh, we take a survey and we do this uh, on an annual basis. Uh, and what we look at is what are, it's in the context of what are today's uh, healthcare trends. Uh, so we surveyed physicians and APPs who work on locum tenens basis uh, during a time when many of our healthcare professionals are re-examining how and where they were. And this includes uh, physicians and APPs. And if you think about it, these, uh, these providers were at ground zero of COVID-19 when the world changed stress and trauma that they experienced uh, caused many to make other decisions about where they wanted to work, how they wanted to work. Many decided to retire. Uh, many changed uh, jobs entirely and, and certainly uh, decided on how they wanted to practice forward. And one of those options out of this time was to step back a bit from some of the perm roles they were in and try uh, to look at how could they practice differently. And locum tenens uh, became an opportunity uh, for them. Uh, so much so that you ended up with about 60,000 of uh, our physicians that now work locum tenens annually today. And that's more than double what it was 10 to 15 years ago. So the main reason that they are turning to locum tenens is because uh, they're looking for a different type of work experience um, and a, a better work experience overall. So what makes it better in their opinion? I think it, what makes it, it better is uh, the flexibility that it offers. So if you think about 97% of the physicians that uh, were surveyed and advanced practice providers that were surveyed, they really did talk about uh, physician freedom and flexibility as uh, the most rewarding aspects of working locum tenens. And if you think about how they can work, they could even be augmenting their current experience by working, lo working locums if that's what they choose to do which means they can hold down a full-time uh, physician uh, or AP uh, position, but they can also augment their income with locums. Some decide that they don't want to get out of practice, uh, but they want to pull back substantially so they can make choices. Uh, they can work two month, two days a month. They can work so many days a year. They can work a full-time locums uh, opportunity if that's what they choose to do. So I think it's the flexibility of schedules that allow them to live a professional life that they want to to stay intact with, but it also allows them uh, on the personal side to make other options and 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 uh, really enhance their personal lives as well. All right, so key theme there, flexibility. What what else might they be garnering from locums? Maybe things that don't come with being a full time physician. Well, physicians and AP uh, providers, they got into the practice because of one thing, they really wanted to care for patients. That was their primary uh, attraction. And what you find is that once you get into it, the administrative duties and responsibilities, reimbursement challenges, all of those things come into play. 86% of those surveyed um, said that the reduction in bureaucracy and paperwork was the most important deciding factor for them to work locum tenens. So when you think about medical practice today and the huge commitment of the physician's time to non-clinical paperwork, locum tenens provides those providers to be able to focus much more on patient care and less on those administrative uh, sides of the medical practice. And they can do what they were trained to do in the first place and do what they wanted to do, which is to see and take care of patients. Yeah, you'd never really hear anybody asking for more paperwork. So I'm sure that that is a, a great byproduct there. OK, you mentioned a little bit with flexibility, but talk to me about burnout and maybe how this helps to mitigate burnout. So think about what uh, physicians and AP providers went through during COVID, the amount of time that, you know, the patient loads were enormous, the stress on um, on physicians enormous. Uh, it took a toll. So even if you look at what Harvard School of Public Health identified uh, back in, in 2019 or before the pandemic, 
they were talking about uh, how that this had become uh, physician burnout had really become a public health crisis. And it only got worse as COVID continued. So 80% of those that we surveyed said that addressing feelings of burnout was one of the reasons that they chose to work locum tenants. Uh, so locum tenants is keeping physicians in the workplace longer and the workforce longer and that might have otherwise have burned out and retired. Uh, so the fact that they can work locum tenants is, um, is, is helpful. But again, it's not the answer to all the problems that we have with physician burnout. Okay. So, you know, if you had a magic bullet there, what is the answer? I think it depends on the facility and the system. But what we, what we do find is that physicians and APPs that we surveyed, um, they would go back to a permanent position uh, if conditions were such uh, that they could have a more flexible schedule. So remember what we said uh, at the top of the uh, the call, and that was around um, feeling of, of needing flexibility, uh, that they wanted to have more balance in their lives. And coming through COVID where so much uh, was put on them uh, to, to attend to a, a very difficult situation. Now you find that uh, if healthcare systems and those that are allowing uh, more freedom and more flexibility that are certainly even looking from a compensation standpoint and other conditions uh, to be more favorable, they would continue working um, in, in those permanent roles. Uh, they just need to, to see an improvement in their daily work experience. Uh, so as we think about you know improvement that, that can take place, reducing some of the bureaucracy uh, and let physicians be physicians, that, that's part of it. But the other part is to make sure that we've got a very good mix. So retaining physicians retaining advanced practice professionals, having nurses and other healthcare workers, um, where you've got the right, right complement uh, to make sure that the ongoing challenge that is causing some of the burnout uh, for these, these uh, physicians and AP professionals, uh, we need to make sure that they have a very good work experience. Uh, and that will certainly help uh, keep physicians in practice longer. That makes sense, especially talking about the retention side. But another trend that we're seeing is that physicians and APPs are starting to do locums tenens work a little bit earlier in their career. So a stat that I think we saw from the survey is that 81 percent are considering it, you know, right out off the bat or in mid-career. And that seems like based off of previous surveys, it's a big increase. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, you're, you're right. And the earlier adoption of locum tenens is really coming about uh, because you've got people graduating from programs uh, that are increasingly valuing that flexibility and diverse work experience right from the start of their careers. It used to be even that healthcare systems and, um, and certain facilities required that you have uh, you know, at least two years of experience before you could um, you could work and consider working locum tenants. Um, things have changed given where the shortages are, and to meet the growing demand, uh, we're finding that education is getting out to uh, would be physicians and AP providers. So they're learning about locum tenants uh, sooner than they did, and there's just you know much more uh, education around it. So we also find that you you have technology which is allowing um, firms like ours to be able to reach candidates much, much faster. So with that growing demand, understanding the shortage is becoming more acute, uh, and there's all of the competition that we have for, uh, for physicians and advanced practice providers, uh, we know that it's essential that we get to those candidates sooner, faster, make sure that they are well-educated. And then we also put systems in place by which we can have greater outreach, if you will, to make sure that they are learning of opportunities faster and that they can engage with us at, in a meaningful way. So I just think that there is much more value placed uh, on the opportunities that exist in locum tenants uh, for, for new graduates. That's, that's great. Thanks for that insight there. I know that that has been a big thing of just when people can get started. So glad to see that there's some advancements there. Um, you also started talking about technology a little bit. I think that's a good segue. Let's maybe talk about some of the technology strategies that you're seeing um, in enhancing sort of this locum tenens workforce. There are lots of things that are changing uh, and advancements that are being made, Carrie. And when we think about uh, our very own vendor management system, or you'll hear it referred to BMS out in the marketplace, um, where there is an, an integrated management solution, for example, 
Uh, when you have a BMS technology, it really streamlines orders. It allows for a different type of approach to staffing. Uh, it, it really does help health systems with their clients. Uh, and it really makes that order to fill process easier and more efficient on, on health systems. So our BMS platform, for example, it activates most multiple sourcing channels, uh, including internal flow pools, for example, or direct hire aggregation, uh, staffing agency management, where you've got how many contracts does a healthcare system have to manage through that have, you know, very, uh, very different components. So being able to uh, manage those contracts and independent contractors, uh, it really does help health systems get their arms wrapped around um, that most expensive part of their P&Ls, which is really on, on labor. So it helps speed up the recruitment process, helps reduce costs. And in terms of physicians and, and APs, it drives revenue faster. So vendor management systems allow you to take a look more holistically uh, at your workforce and how to manage that to a, a more efficient and more cost, uh, if cost effective, uh, operating model. And when I hear fast and cost effective, it's hard to not talk about AI. Right. Can you go a little bit more into AI and the enhancement in the recruitment process? Well, that's, you know, look at how AI is uh, certainly we're on the cusp and, and hearing so much about it and it's going to continue to evolve. Uh, and we think about how exciting it is with, uh, especially some of those more manual pieces of what it is to to find candidates. It starts with a sourcing uh, process that you go through through a database, and you're trying to match candidates uh, to job opportunities. There are skill sets, there's credentialing, there are licenses. There's so many things involved in finding a candidate that is suitable for a particular opening, and what AI. And some of the technology, like a, a text kernel, for example, which we utilize, it allows us on the front end to much more quickly, the system can generate a list of candidates by skill set, credentials, licensure, um, where they want to work, type of environment. It really does aggregate those very, very quickly, much more quickly than we could have done manually before so that we can actually get a list of suitable candidates in front of a, a healthcare system much faster than we ever could before. And then it's also helping us curate that list down to where we have our recruiters who have the ability then with the information provided to make the best connection for that healthcare facility. And in some cases, Carrie, if you think about even advanced technology like our passport, it actually does that work, which is sourcing and matching. And then it can also submit that candidate immediately to a, a client. Uh, so think about the speed of which this can happen now. And prior, it might take get days, weeks, you, you know, lengthy periods of time for us to make those matches. And now it is done exponentially faster, really putting a provider in the, in the front of a decision maker very, very quickly. Awesome. Jeff, short and, and sweet combo. We've talked about flexibility. We've talked about entering into the profession of locum tenens. We've moved into technology. What else would you like to leave our listeners or viewers with? You know, there's so much happening, Carrie, and it's an exciting place to be uh, for when you look at the advancements of, of technology and how it's really allowing us to make uh, those more proper fits faster. Um, that, that's important. And I think with, uh, around that, it also just helps our health systems to be smarter. Uh, so when we think about the work that, that we're doing currently where we're trying to make sure we have the best possible experience for a provider to get matched to a job more quickly, also making sure that our clients have a much better experience with what it looks like not to be inundated with so much that's coming at them from a lot of directions, but really seeing those candidates that are a bit best fit, have schedules that can support. By the time our customers are looking for providers, they typically have already stretched their internal staff, you know, beyond where they, they would like to be stretching them. They, they've looked at their internal flow pools, uh, and then they're having to reach out. Well, there can be a gap in revenue between all of that. When they finally decide to bring in a locums, those that can provide that locum tenon uh, faster is going to support getting that uh, system, that healthcare facility, what it needs, which is really 
someone in place to drive not only revenue, but of course, to serve the needs of their community and their patients. So I think that it's an exciting time. It's evolving uh, and it's a, a wonderful time to be where we are and how we can help our health systems do exactly that, the hard work of finding people to put in place quickly to address their uh, their constituents' needs. Jeff, thank you. You summed that up perfectly. I know that we'll provide a link to the survey for our listeners and our viewers, and I'm sure it's available at amnhealthcare.com. Jeff, thank you for taking the time today. And thank you, everybody, for listening and watching Elevate Care. And we will see you next time. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Carrie. A pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us today on Elevate Care. If you found this episode valuable, please consider sharing it with a colleague and subscribing to our show on your favorite podcast platform. You can learn more about this episode and our show on our website at amnhealthcare.com and follow us on social media to stay updated on new episodes and the ever-changing world of healthcare.